World Population Day, celebrated yearly on the 11th day of July, is a day set aside by the United Nations General Assembly to raise awareness about population impact on the environment and development. In Nigeria, what pivotal role does this celebration play? Themes of World Population Day are called to action because there are things that have been looked through the year and has informed on what should we do about an issue. So data have become an issue because the last year and this year have been years of reviews and evaluation of efforts as we journey to 2030. And one of the things that was discovered was data gap in measuring, particularly in Africa. That was what part, that is why part of the 2024 State of the World Population Report was focused on asking African nations that in the conduct of their censuses, they should do this, they should do that. So data is, is critical. And for us, for you to have a robust, inclusive data, it comes from the census, the conduct of a census. The surveys are selective or focal in terms, what I mean focal, it could be co concentrated for in a particular area or focused on a particular item, but the census is encompassing. So that's where we have all the information we would need at just one point. 15 months after the postponement of the National Population and Housing Census, originally slated for May 2023, with about 200 billion naira spent out of an estimated 869 billion naira, questions about a future date persist. I would just say that we were at the verge of conducting the census last year when the uh, immediate past president felt he wouldn't be around to follow up to the end of the census and all the processes that followed for the, date, the, the outcome data to be approved, adopted and used for planning. So he felt the new administration that was coming at the heel of his departure should take charge. So that was moved to the new administration. So that's the best we can say about it. And because Nigeria's census is not legislative, what I mean by that, it doesn't have a legislative backup in the sense that there's no act of government on it. So there are two ways to permit a census in a country, either through legislation or through what we call a proclamation, where the president will come to face the press and say, OK, Nigeria is going to do census at this point in time and this is the money we have to fund the census and we also ask our donor because it's difficult for a country to fund a census particularly in africa you will need donors and partners to support so that is the process the other one is that you have an act of parliament that just like the, the issues of uh, election, election it has an act of parliament that is why no matter whether we have money or not, we must conduct election every four years. We don't have that in Nigeria. Other African countries have, Kenya has, um, Ghana has, and other countries, South Africa has, but we don't have that yet. So we depend on whenever the president feels it's appropriate for us to do census, then he will make that proclamation. So that's what the National Population Commission is waiting for. 18 years since the last census raises the issue of adequate data information and in running up-to-date systems in Nigeria. You know, we have what we call projections. Like it was mentioned yesterday, you get estimates from the projections. So for now, we, we are still using those projections and those estimates. It's allowed by demography or demographers, and it's allowed internationally until you do census, you keep on relying. Although it may not give you the kind of information you would have gotten if you had a census at the right time. But that's the best we have. So you advise to use the best 
that you have. So that's the best we have for now. Wow. Okay. And we also run surveys. Okay. The NBS also have all that sources of survey. But we also run the survey called the National uh, Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey. That is, and we've run the census and we are doing the analysis now. So any moment from now, that report will be out. It also guides. Over the past three decades, societies around the world have made remarkable progress in improving population data gathering, analysis, and use. However, the most marginalized communities remain underrepresented in data, profoundly affecting their lives and well-being. How is the National Population Commission addressing these concerns? Data collection is dynamic because in the new world that we have is technology based. And you know technology is also dynamic. So we look at, like the theme said, inclusive data, the power of inclusive data to address issues of resilience and also ensure that we have a, an equitable future. So in that, when from the previous data and all that, we've seen gaps that okay, maybe the previous data, we did not collect information sufficiently enough on this area. So we review our questionnaire to make sure that in the next census, the gaps that were discovered will be captured in the um, current or wherever we'll do the census. They'll, those gaps will be captured. And it depends on what gaps you're talking about. But the most important thing to avoid gap is to have an inclusive census. A census that leaves no one behind. Everybody is counted in your diversity, wherever you are. We will not say, oh, because this area is difficult for us to enter, we will not go and count the people. So the, the inclusive data is saying, wherever they are, go and count them. Take account of the diversity they have. Make sure whether they are able or disabled, they are counted. And wherever the far reach, where everybody must be counted and we must give account of what they are, who they are, what they do, everything about them, that is where we will not have those gaps. In search of an accurate headcount in Nigeria, the NPC sought to leverage technology. Some experts, however, lamented some pitfall in this move given the heterogeneity of the Nigerian populace. How is this being addressed? There is technology that allow you to take a census. It may not be physically that people will go there and count those people, but we have a technology that can enable you. It's, it was developed by United Nations Population Fund to help. We know that across Africa we have a lot of insecurity, but censuses are taking place in those places by those, the way technology have designed, this is technology that will help you to make sure the people there are counted. So we, we had deployed that technology. And in the use of technology, technology is human driven. And we have also trained our enumerators to be able to use whatever technology we intended to use at that time. And you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's innovative. So whenever we we'll we'll do the census and there's any new technology that has come up in the next round of censuses or in this round of censuses, definitely we will train people to do that. And the technology that allows you to have information during census um, it's called GRID 3. The technology is called GRID 3. It allows you to be able to take a census of the people in any domain of insecurity. So all those things were packages that the National Population Commission put together to carry out the census. And if there are any new technology that will come up at any time, because it's a digital census, will always be flexible to adapt to signature, to um, technology in our censuses. How is the recent data collection affecting our economic realities? We are collecting information, data, evidence. We call it evidence. 
because the information, the data, when it is analyzed, it becomes mm -hmm. an evidence that you captured at that moment. So based on that evidence, the government using that evidence will inform policy and actions and interventions and strategies that will address those economic realities that we captured. A well-developed and functioning civil registration system ensures the registration of all vital events, including births, marriages, and deaths. It also issues relevant certificates as proof of such registration. To this end, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu launched the Electronic Civil Registration and Vital Statistics System, known as the ECRVS, on Wednesday, the 18th day of November 2023, at the State House Conference Center, Abuja. What had been the engagement level of this initiative? Nigeria is a big country in terms of language and very diversity, but bit by bit we're getting to spread the news, to get acceptability, to make people to understand, to enjoy doing it by themselves rather than pay transport and be looking for our offices. But it do take time. But we are trying our best to, to, to create awareness and sensitize people on how to use the online registration. If you have, we have two ways of registering birth. We have the birth registration itself that takes care of zero to 17 years old. Okay. The moment you cross over to become 18, we don't give you a birth certificate again. We give you what is called attestation. Mm -hmm. But before we issue an attestation, you go to the federal I court anywhere to collect what we call the statutory birth registration, birth affidavit, yes, statutory birth declaration. Mm -hmm. When you bring that document, then we now issue attestation. But now that is dig digital, when you get that, you scan it and have a soft copy of it. Okay. So when you go online to register, it will ask you to offload. And that's one of the basic documents you will offload so that you can get your attestation. Nigeria has become a country of reference in Africa. It is therefore imperative that issues of population data collection is done with standard best practices. How has the NPC achieved this? We have global and regional agreements and agenda that guides the implementation of population and development activity across Africa and across the world. And one of them is the International Conference on Population and Development Program of Action that started in 1994. So it's on the basis of that, uh, the population policy was better because it contains all issues about human beings, whether married, unmarried, young, old, all the age structure, everything that has to do with numbers to who makes up the number is there. So Nigeria has remained a part. Then you come to the African region. We have a lot of um, agreement, a lot of declarations here and there. Nigeria leads Africa because Nigeria is the biggest, in terms of numbers, Nigeria is the biggest um, population in Africa. Nigeria has a large population of young people and at the global stage, Nigeria provides a great leadership through our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When it comes to population and development issues, the National Population Commission comes up to lead. Even though the Foreign Affairs will be giving us guidance on how it is the, it's displayed out there at the global level, but we sit at the front seat to lead in Africa, African population and development issues in Africa and also at the global level and within the context of implementing the 2030 agenda, Nigeria also is functioning very greatly and all other regional um, issues. So we, we are a very, very key player because you cannot ignore us, you cannot ignore Nigeria. You can't ignore us because if you ignore Nigeria, Africa, you've ignored Africa.
You've ignored the black race. That's why they said in every five Africans, at least one of them will be a Nigerian. A tree, they say, never make a forest. And so there is a needed collaboration and synergy to ensure a synchronized data pool in the country. How is this process being achieved? For us, when we are conducting the census, we, like I told you, apart from having engagement with the people, we also work in connectivity with other data producing agencies. We work in collaboration with NBS, we work with collaboration with NIMSI, we work in collaboration with the Federal Road Safety Corps. Uh, Corps. We work with all the data, we work with the NIS, we work with them because in one way or the other, they have a contribution to make, to, to shape what we are doing. So we don't work in isolation. We work connecting and partnering and collaborating with all relevant agencies. But connecting with the people, we have, we, implement, we coordinate implementation of the uh, National Policy on Population uh, for Sustainable Development. That is the biggest platform to engage everybody because it contains things to do to improve, the overall goal is to improve the quality of life and standard of living of every city, everyone that lives in Nigeria. As the theme of this year's World Population Day reminds us of investing in data collection, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called on countries to enhance the potentials of the forthcoming Summit of the Future. How is Nigeria leveraging on the score? You can't shape the future without knowing who you are going to shape the future for. Who are they? Where are they? What are their di diversities across them? You need to have that information on hand so that you can speak. Like I told them when we were preparing, I said, we should even though we speak for Africa, we should speak about ourselves as a country. Because I don't think there's any country in, in the world that has the diversity that Nigeria has. In terms of language, in terms of the people, in terms of so many things. I think we have the greatest diversity and I feel that is one of the things that informed the president to revert back to the old national anthem that brings out that issue of diversity and how we can embrace it and instead of it breaking us but that diversity should reunite us as a country and build our resilience to have a peaceful and a prosperous nation with future plans comes hurdles that must be surpassed what are these challenges one of the greatest um, issue we have is funding we don't have funding because we are supposed to have a lot of radio programs, sensitization program for behavioral change to make people to know why they shouldn't have many children and why we should send girls to school, why should we not uh, stop child marriage and all that. How do we handle out of school children? What are we doing about the human, those found in the humanitarian setting? How do we handle issues of disability? They are all embedded in that policy. but. Um, we also have a framework called the, um, we have three of them for the implementation of that policy. We have the National Council on Population Management chaired by Mr. President. We have the Population Advisory Group chaired by the Chairman of National Population Commission. We also have the Population Technical Working Group chaired by the Director General of the National Population Commission. But at each of this level have different uh, stakeholders forming those groups. The PTWG have all the sectorial ministries, agencies of the government, research and other key players, the civil society working with us at that level. So we use them to reach, they come to report at the coordinator and we also discuss how their work is touching people's life at the community level, at the state level and at the national. So but like I said, one of the major issues we have is financing activities that will inform people, that will interact with the people, that will engage people. We don't have funding. Our rich human tapestry is only as strong as its weakest thread. When data and other systems work for those on the margins, they work for everyone. 
to realize the rights and choices of those on the margins of our societies, we must count them because everyone counts.